everyone welcome back in this lecture we're going to be discussing about uh, assertions and a basic overview for system where log assertions how we can write um, assertions for in system where log assertion in simply a check the idea is to validate uh, the intention of the designer so as we always uh, do, we verify um, the design. The assertion simply validates uh, your uh, your design uh, that uh, the design meets is a specification. Okay. You can write test bench assertions, interface level assertions chip level duty uh, assertions and block level assertions and um, you can also specify different uh, clock domain assertions also you can specify you can write uh, assertions for formal checks formal verification tools also the timing uh, level assertions that uh, you want to check min pulse width or max pulse width those kind of assertions um, <coughs> Let's say for an example uh, how you can specify the behavior of these two signals okay, uh, in system variable. So what, what it is here that uh, the signal A, okay, it toggles to high and the signal B follows signal A or in other words uh, B will be uh, toggled to low after one or two clock cycles a is triggered to high okay so we want to uh, verify or we want to validate this behavior or this situation and it it is supposed to be true all the time okay so very simple check how we can write a two line code in system where log simply the we can specify property check p uh, at the rate at passage clock okay so positive edge or rising edge of the clock uh, if signal a rose okay goes to high and that follows after one or two clock cycles uh, double hash is nothing but the delay uh, one to two means one to two clock cycles signal b falls signal a say for example here this is the clock edge signal a rises so after one clock cycle or two clock cycle, signal B falls. And then after specifying this property, you just simply assert, use the assert statement and assert this property. Assert property check B. So what, what this statement will do that it will continuously check uh, that whether uh, the signal are validating this behavior or not if not then simply you display the error now it also uh, may happen that uh, you your stimulus may not trigger that particular behavior okay but you want to cover that okay i have uh, my test cases have covered all the uh, properties or uh, you know um, if is there any property is being untested by your test cases uh, you want to check that so basically you need to you can write a cover cover statement in your coverage module that it will cover uh, this property check p okay and if this property is passed then it will simply say check pass means this property uh, is being exercised by your stimulus okay because what happens that your stimulus may not trigger these two signals a and b okay so if the a and b are not triggered then assert statement assert property it will basically be useless for example because both signals are not triggering right 
but you can catch that in, in the coverage report if you specify the cover property, that statement, okay? Very simple. Now let's uh, talk about uh, broadly uh, system Verilog assertions can be classified in immediate and concurrent assertions. Immediate assertions are simply that they test for a condition at a current time and concurrent means that they test for a sequence of events spread over multiple clock, clock periods, okay? For an example, immediate uh, assertions, you can simply write it. For example, you want to check that uh, your uh, state, okay, a state of a state machine is one hot encoded or not, okay? If it is not one hot encoded, then you display a fatal error. So that's a simple check and it will be checked at the current uh, time, okay? Always whenever the state is, is triggering, okay? Now for the concurrent uh, statements, it's like uh, the events are spread over multiple clock cycles. For example, uh, in this example, the request, okay? Request signal goes to high at the first clock. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are basically representative of the clock edges. Okay. And the acknowledgement goes high after two or three clock cycles. Okay. How we can uh, write um, assertions for this behavior? It is very simple as we discussed uh, on the previous page. Uh, very simple that we can specify a property and then assert the property. So either way you can specify property separately and then assert the property with the property name or in one statement you can write assert property at passage clock request request calls high and then hash hash is the delay one to three clock cycles. So after one one or three so it may be one two or three right uh, after these many clock period delays acknowledgement goes high okay or acknowledgement follows the request okay if this property doesn't hold then uh, error message will be displayed so how simple is that and you can basically combine immediate or concurrent assertions and can write complex uh, system Verilog assertions for validating your design intent. All right, let's take a look at a few more complex examples. If we talk about multiple clocks, all right, so we have a very simple example here. This is a pulse, okay, um, this input, okay, this is uh, giving you a pulse and it is being synchronized and going to a different clock domain. So basically what it is that the, if there is a pulse at the input, it will follow at the output. So here we are basically putting a NOT gate and uh, this is generating a pulse in clock domain one and we should uh, verify or validate this in the second clock domain at the output port, okay? So how we can write uh, this uh, design intent? Very simple. We specify a property pulse check at passage clock one in means in and then we specify the second in the second clock domain passage clock two after two to three clock cycle we get the output okay so this simple two line of code uh, will uh, validate okay whether the pulse input is at the pulse output, okay? Now let's take another example of multiple clocks where um, where uh, the multiple clocks are, are used in a typical asynchronous FIFO, okay? So this is a typical block diagram of asynchronous FIFO where you have write control logic, read control logic, and you're accessing data in a RAM. 
all right so how how you can write the data integrity behavior uh, for this scenario or for this block data integrity simply means that you are reading and writing uh, the data in the right order okay and right number of bytes simply so let's see uh, we specify a property data integrity and at passage write clock domain write count how many um, bytes we have uh, written and we validate the data okay data is equal to w data follows uh, we want to read it in a read clock domain at passage read clock first match some delay 0 to a number of cycle when we get the first match and then we compare okay the read okay this uh, read is high it acts as a read enable and r count means number of bytes you have counted what you have read okay and which is equal to the r data equal to data now here you see data is a internal variable where uh, data holds the same data what we have written and we are comparing the data against what we have read so this is a simple you know property statement and you can assert this property all right so if you don't use the assert statements uh, the properties you know as you have uh, written a piece of logic but it will not be exercised until or unless you use the assert statement all right so the assert and this property very simple well some tips okay uh, do not duplicate the rtl typically what happens that when the rtl designers they uh, want to write uh, assertions they they are already thinking in the, in the terms of logic so do not duplicate that's a first thing that be careful that you are not mistakenly duplicating the rtl when you are writing the assertions okay so it's always better to um, to write assertions by somebody else other than the block designer that's a good practice but if you are the only one in your team who is responsible for writing the RTL logic and assertions, be careful that don't duplicate RTL. And the idea here is to capture the intent, not the, not the logic. So you need to capture the intent, what, uh, what is the intention of this piece of logic or RTL logic. It's a good idea to add assertions through RTL design process very early in the in the design cycle. Uh, that will save a lot of time, and also it it will save you uh, for the effort spent in finding the bugs and correcting correcting them later on uh, in the design process. It will save a lot of time, a lot of effort if uh, assertions planning is done in the beginning of the RTL design process. Also, you may think of if, if some assertions did not catch a failure, uh, means that uh, you need to write more assertion or you need to modify that assertion to catch, uh, catch that failure. Okay? And always think in terms of reusing uh, the code so like uh, we, we do RTL code reuse, uh, same way, we need to think in terms of reusing the assertions written earlier for another block, reuse, important. And a big question, um, often we struggle, who will write uh, the assertions, design engineers or verification engineers? Well, the short answer is that both you are developing a test bench okay what if the test bench is wrong itself is wrong how are you gonna check it okay so one level of assertions you yourself make sure validate that your test bench is right also at the uh, uh, chip level uh, assertions it's better uh, the verification engineers uh, write those assertions who, whose responsibility 
is to just see at the block level, at the black box, like a black box. They know the input and output and the appropriate behavior. So that's uh, the verification engineers. They, they should write at the chip level or top level assertions. And the design engineers who are writing RTL code, um, they should, uh, if they write at the block level, basically it makes everybody's life easier. So at the, in, in, in short, at, at micro architecture level, okay, or block level, it is the design engineer. And at the chip level, it is the verification engineer who is going to write the assertions. All right. Now some few keywords associated with the, with the assertions, assert, property, cover, we already discussed these three, um, assume uh, that we want to assume certain properties throughout our simulation cycle, expect, we want to expect that behavior uh, written in that uh, property, sequence, sequence of events and so on. Main or assert, you want to assert, uh, assert came from the assertions, you want to assert certain property or certain situation to be true all the time or you are basically validating it and property. Okay, cover is for coverage. Uh, <coughs> Thank you very much guys for uh, listening this uh, short lecture on system wear log assertions. If you are really struggling with, uh, with any of the subject, uh, you may contact for private lessons. Um, nevertheless, uh, I thank you uh, once again for subscribing and liking Leap Professor on YouTube and for your wonderful comments. Uh, do not hesitate to uh, write me back if you need uh, um, more lectures on any other subject or any other topic. I would try my best to, to do some lectures on those topics. Alright, have a wonderful day.